Welcome traders to another Tickmill Weekly Market Outlook for week commencing the 18th of July with me, Patrick Munnerly. <coughs> okay, let's jump into the US data calendar for the week ahead and see what we've got on board. We have Monday, July, NHAB Housing Price Index. Last time printed 67, this time consensus looks for a 66 print. Outlook for builders to deteriorate given the rates and market uncertainty. Heading into Tuesday, <coughs> another bunch of housing stats. Uh, June housing starts. Last time out, minus 14.4%. Actually looking for a positive 2.7% print this time. Input supply, the primary constraint for current construction. Tighter financial conditions are obviously continuing to weigh on the pipeline. So in terms of the other print we get, we get June uh, building permits, last time out minus 7%, looking for a minus 1.7% given those tighter financial conditions. Heading into Wednesday, we get June existing home sales, last time negative 3.4%, looking for a negative 0.2% affordability, locking many out of the market in the US. Thursday, July, Philly Fed Index, last time negative 3.3%, looking for a positive one7 uh, regional surveys have deteriorated materially of late. And then we also get initial jobless claims uh, remaining near historic lows, <coughs> printing 244k last week. June leading index, last time negative 0.4%, looking for a negative 0.5% as the growth outlook in the US continues to deteriorate. And then we round out the week on Friday with uh, manufacturing PMIs, looking for a 51 print versus the 52.7 last time, broad-based deterioration in activity across the across industry and services looks to be heading uh, in, in downwards in the US. We're looking for the global services PMI to print a 52 versus a 52.7 last time out. Okay, so that's the fundamental drivers. Let's take a look at the technical setup for the week ahead. Dollar index held our resistance area 108.70s, 108.77. We did spike a bit higher, but closed on Friday down uh, into or below 108 handle. We've actually flipped the five period volume weighted average price negative as well now, bearish. So I'm looking for a three way corrective moves back in to test the 106, 106.50 area. From there, I watch for bullish reversal patterns to re engage on the long side. And we are looking for a price then to move up to test the uh, 110 handle. At this stage, it would really take a loss, this internal trend line support back through 105.50 to suggest we have a more meaningful high in place. Heading into the Eurozone, we are looking at uh, Tuesday to get June CPI, looking for a 0.8% print there, the final print for the month, driven by soaring food and energy prices. And then heading into Wednesday, we get July consumer confidence. Uh, last time, negative 23.6, looking for a negative 25. Energy security and inflation weighing heavily on confidence. And then the all-important uh, Thursday for the Eurozone with the ECB policy decision. Refi rate widely expected uh, to be raised for the first time in... Uh, in 11 years, it's going to be the real market event next week. So uh, all eyes are going to be on that uh, on that release. Uh, expect the ECB to fiercely debate whether the first hike in 11 years will be just 25 basis points or perhaps 50 basis points after all. Also key out of next week's meeting will be the anti-fragmentation tool, which investors will watch closely to see how robust it can be to curb spreads in the Eurozone. With Italian political problems servicing again, an additional challenge is added to next week's meeting. While summer meetings at the ECB can be dull, this one clearly won't be. Also important is how much the economy is cooling off in the Eurozone. Next week's PMIs are going to help to give a read on that. So heading into Friday, we get those all important PMIs looking for a 51 versus a 52.1 last time out supply and cost pressures weighing on manufacturing activity and also as services lose momentum from inflation fears we're looking for the services to print 52 versus a 53 and that rounds out the data for next week in terms of the eurozone so let's take a look at the technical setup for the euro euro on friday closed uh 
1.0088 and it has flipped the daily volume weight and average price bullish. So we are looking for a three wave corrective move in to test the 102 area. From there, I'm watching for bearish reversal patterns to re-engage on the short side, targeting a move down to test the 9770s, which coincides with the uh, 9767 yearly S3. From there, I'll be watching for a more sustained corrective move to play out. Now, heading to the UK, let's take a look at what we've got on deck there. We have July right move house prices on Monday. 0.3% demand is softening as these rate hikes start to take effect. Uh, Tuesday, we get the May ILO unemployment rate, 3.8% last time, uh, looking for 3.9%, holding near pre-pandemic levels there. And then heading into Wednesday, we get uh, UK CPI, 0.7% last time, looking for a drop here, 0.5%. Energy really remains the key driver there. And we round out the week in the UK on Friday with uh, GFK consumer sentiment, negative 41 last time. Confidence has collapsed in the UK amid inflation pressures, really restricting the consumer spending activity. So we're looking for a decline in uh, a, sm a small positive in terms of retail sales, 0.1%. Uh, and then we get manufacturing PMI, 52. Services PMI, 54. UK manufacturing and services to face a sharp slowdown over the course of 2022. So from a technical perspective, <clears throat> The uh, sterling is trading in this wedge. I'm looking for a test into the 117. I want to see momentum divergence maintained, bullish reversal patterns there to engage on the long side, looking for a move up to test 12050, 12070 on the upside. From there, I'm watching for bearish reversal patterns to re-engage on the short side. Ultimately, I'm looking for a move down to test 115. At this stage, we really need to see a close through the trend channel resistance here. So a close above 121 to suggest we have a more meaningful low in place. In Japan next week, let's see what's on the data slate. Uh, we start the week really at the end of the week um, with the June CPI release on Friday. That was 2.5% last time, looking for a 2.4% this time. Services PMIs, 54 last. Um, manufacturing PMI 52.7. Easing of health restrictions, probably supporting services, but supply issues uh, post near term risk to the manufacturing print there in Japan. So from a technical perspective, uh, it's also a holiday on Monday uh, in Tokyo. So we're anticipating a bit of limited, uh, limited trade in terms of the dollar yen as we start the week, but I'm looking for any move that tests and holds this trend line support, 137.60s, for an extension up to get a ding there of the 140. And from there, I'm looking for a more sustained uh, corrective move to play out three ways back into test this high volume node at the 135 handle before looking for the next leg to the upside. Any early loss of this trend line support at the 137, also then I'd be looking to engage on the short side, targeting that move back down to 135. And rounding out the week down under in Australia, what do we have? Tuesday, we get the RBA minutes. We're looking for some color around that July 50 basis point hike. And what are the risks to the outlook? We also get RBA Deputy Governor Bullock speaking at an ESA business lunch on Tuesday. And then heading into Wednesday, we get RBA Governor Lowe speaking, Australian Strategic Business Forum. We get June Westpac MI leading index Last time, 0.58%, losing altitude rapidly, but still tracking just above trend. And that rounds out the data in terms of uh, Australia next week. From a technical perspective, <clears throat> the uh, Aussie dollar in this wedge, if we can break here, then I'm looking for a three-way corrective move up into the high volume low, 171.80. Ideally, I would like to see the, high, uh, the equality objective at 166.50, properly tested first. So if we hold this trend line resistance and get that move down, once again, I'll be looking to engage on the long side, looking for a minimum three-way corrective move into that weekly high volume node, 71.70s. And that concludes the weekly market outlook for week commencing the 18th of July. We'll just wrap up actually with taking a quick look at Bitcoin. Uh, Bitcoin's sitting at that trend line resistance now. So this is going to be key. If we hold the trend line resistance and take out this trend line support through that 19,500 level on a closing basis, 
then we are targeting that 12,185, that major weekly equality objective. And just below there, we have the high volume load, 9,317. Now, if we could take out this trend line resistance on a closing basis, then we could see a more protracted corrective move, probably something in nature to what, uh, what we saw before that rollover at the beginning of, uh, of June. So we can anticipate more sideways action here. We'd really need to see a close, strong close back through uh, 22,000 to start to think about a, a more significant corrective phase developing in Bitcoin. Okay, traders, as always, plan the trade, trade the plan, and most importantly, manage your risk. Until next week, thanks very much.